Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing you God's truth today. Now, this is a new week, and the Lord spoke to me concerning this week, and from actually from this broadcast, there is a prayer the Lord said I should begin to pray with you on every broadcast. So every day our message is coming out, pray that prayer with you. Now, what's the prayer? It's so beautiful. See, listen, when God tells you what to pray or when God gives you the words to pray with, then you just know that you're in for a miracle. <laughs> Praise God. So when the Lord said that to me, I was like, whoa, Lord, I understand what you're about to do. So are you ready? That's a simple prayer Jesus taught us to pray. When, when what we call the Lord's Prayer, there's a part he, Jesus said we should make a demand by asking the Lord to give us this day our daily bread. Now the Lord spoke to me and said, from henceforth, I must lead you to pray that prayer with me. That means get ready for a miracle on a daily basis, praise God. So are you ready now to pray? Lift up your hands if you can, or if you cannot lift up your hands, then just make sure you mean these words as you say them and declare them with me. Say, Father, today I demand my daily bread. I receive it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. That's it. As short as it is, it will produce a miracle for you today. Watch out, because I'll be expecting your testimony. And Father, we just bless you for today's broadcast. As I speak your word, Lord, everyone watching, listening to me right now, everybody in their lives are being lifted. Yokes are being destroyed right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Lord. Oh, your spirit will guide us into all truth. So we know we shall be grounded in your truth, which is the light. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Turn your Bibles with me to Romans chapter number 8. Now, we started this last week, and let's see how the Lord is going to help us go on it this week. Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 12, excuse me, from verse 1. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now, I'll read it from the Amplified version so you see what he's saying no, amplified makes it louder praise god now he says i appeal to you therefore brethren and beg of you in view of all the mercies of god see he says in view of all the mercies of god now god's mercy have been made available to us now he's telling you because of that mercy or as as that mercy is existing i'm begging you right now praise god what to make a decisive dedication of your bodies now he's not saying it's something you just say oh god you own me or you own my body or no he says to make a decisive dedication so, so it's something you think about jesus said if a man wants to build a house he will first of all sit down and count the cost so when he says make a decisive dedication that word decisive in other words i know exactly what i'm doing and this is my decision and i'm standing by it praise god so to so make a decisive dedication of your bodies presenting all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice holy that means devoted consecrated and well pleasing to god which is your reasonable rational intelligent service and spiritual worship praise god i love the way amplify puts it it says it is your rational and intelligent service and spiritual worship 
It's not just talking about God owns us. No, I make a decisive decision to consecrate my life and present it to him as holy and as a way it will be acceptable to him. Praise God. Now he says in the next verse, says, and, and be not, let me read the Amplified, it says, do not be conformed, verse 2 now, do not be conformed to this world, that is this age, fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial custom. But be transformed, changed by the entire, I want you to get this now, by the entire renewal of your mind by its new ideas and its new attitude so that you may prove for yourself what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. Many words, but explaining what exactly is in the mind of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now he says, you present your body. I say, make a decisive decision. I'm presenting my body as a living sacrifice. Now, when you do that, he said, this sacrifice must be holy. It must be acceptable unto God. And then he begins to tell you how in verse 2. He says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. You've got to renew your mind. You've got to be transformed. How does the transformation take place? It's not, say, it's not going to take place because you sat down and you are praying. No, when you pray, there's a reason we pray. When we pray, we commune with the Lord, we fellowship with God. And as we pray, we talk to Him, He talks back to us. Now God, listen, you are dealing with God. I, do, you, do, you, do you take time to think about it? That Hey, the one I'm dealing with is God. He is wiser than me. He is more intelligent than me. He is, I think about it. You know, you know, Isaiah said, as the heavens are far above the earth. That is exactly how God's thoughts are far above our thoughts. Now, what does that mean? When someone who's so intelligent is talking to you, what happens to you? You learn new things. You learn new things. So, when he says, don't be conformed to this world. Hold on now, I want to show you something. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Exodus. Exodus chapter 19. Let me show you something quickly. Verse 5. Exodus 19 and verse 5. Watch this now. Talking about, you know, how to be holy. Now he says, present yourself as a living sacrifice unto God. And then he said, it should be a holy sacrifice. Now, in Exodus chapter 19 verse 5, he says here, and he says, now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, that ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. See, now, he is telling us there that we should present our bodies as living sacrifice to God. Now, God is actually saying here, if you will present yourself as a living sacrifice to me, how do you present yourself as a living sacrifice to God? That's what he's saying. If, the, if now, if therefore, you will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant. So if you're going to live by my voice, if you're going to live by keeping my covenant, if you're going to do this, then what happens to you? It says, you are going to be a peculiar treasure unto me. Did you see that? You are going to become a peculiar treasure unto me, praise God. Above all people. So I'm going to take you special. Now we know God loves the whole world, praise God, he does. But then he says, if you are going to separate yourself from the rest to keep my voice or obey my voice or keep my word. Now that's just what it is to, you know, to, to present yourself as a living sacrifice. That's exactly what it is. It's not, oh God, from today I want to go and be sweeping the church. Listen, he talked about your spiritual worship. The spiritual worship is not going to clean the church or going to do some physical work in church. It is your spirit, yielding your spirit to understand the mind of God and to follow the mind of God. 
That's why it says you can't, you can't present your body as a living sacrifice and still be thinking the same way you used to think before or thinking like the world thinks. You can't do that. Why can't you do that? Because the one you have presented yourself as a living sacrifice will surely accept this living sacrifice. Now, when he accepts the living sacrifice, what does he do with it? He feasts with you. That is exactly what he does. The call of God is a call to feast. Yeah, it is. All God is saying to you, hey, the table has been set. Now, come and dine. Now, what do you have to do? You have to now leave every other thing that was getting your attention and go to this king's banquet and dine with him. And guess what? When you dine with him, everything you were looking for out there that was keeping you outside there, you will find on the king's table. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, you will find it there. You know, take for example, you know, someone is inviting you to come to church, you know, oh, come, please come to church. No, 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 you know what? I have got to see this man. There's this man I've been looking for for the past three months. You know, every time I go to his office, I, I, I in fact, it's today I'm going to, and then like, okay, did you see him? No, I didn't see him. Next week again, come for a meeting. Oh, look, look, I'm, I'm chasing this man. I've got to see him. I've got, to. and finally, you agree to come for the meeting. So someone is inviting you for service or whatever meeting, you know. And then you finally decide, okay, I'm going to go. And then you get there and you sit down and you turn to your right. And, and here's the person you've been looking for for all these months, sitting right beside you. Free, no security, no nothing. He's just, because it's church, he's just sitting beside you. I said, ah, good day, sir. You, 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 you worship here? I say, yeah, I worship here. Praise <laughs> God. And come on. So, all these months I've been going to your office, going to your house, trying to get a hold of you, and you're just here freely, praise God. That's how it is when God invites you to his table and you obey his voice. Everything out there that was distracting you prior to that time, I'm telling you the truth, every reason, everything you were chasing out there, you'll find it in the Lord's table. So the call of God to consecration is the call to come and dine with him. Do you understand that? So now he says, don't be conformed to this world. See, that is why you need to switch from the reasoning of the world and accept to follow his leading. In his leading, you will find growth. You will find intelligence. You will find, I'm telling you, this, there is no one who truly walks with God who doesn't, who's not intelligent. There is no one. You can't rub minds with God and still remain dull. It's impossible to be dull when you walk with God. It's just impossible. Who are intelligent people? Intelligent people are not the most knowledgeable people. Intelligent knowledge helps in intelligence. It, it helps boost your intelligence. Now, you see, but intelligence means you have an intelligent person is simply someone who has several ways of getting to his destination. That's what it means to be intelligent. I've got several ways to get to my destiny. So when this road is blocked, like, oh, mm, okay, I'll take this other route. I'll still get to where I'm going to. <laughs> you see, he, he can't be trapped in a place. He can't be trapped in his thinking. Now that's why I say knowledge will boost your intelligence. If you don't know something about those other routes to take, you'll be stuck. Praise God. So, so listen, you can't fellowship with God and not show intelligence in life. Because, see, first of all, you are going to be operating from a different dimension that the world does not even understand. You're going to be walking by a voice that speaks to you that nobody else hears. You know what I mean by nobody else hears? You're going to be operating by that voice. So he tells you, sit down, don't move here for the next one hour. And everybody is moving. Hey, what are you doing here? No, don't worry. I'm, I'm just waiting for something. And then eventually something happens and then you get it. Like, hey, you knew all the while. You knew. You didn't want to tell us. The truth is you didn't know. But you were functioning by a voice they were not hearing. So everybody look at that guy. He's intelligent. He knows a lot of things that we don't know. But you see, you see, the truth is we know the one who knows all things. Praise God. Woo. Renew your mind. Don't be stuck in your former way of reasoning. 
Our time is up and I'm going to continue from here tomorrow. God bless you. Listen, step out today. Believe for a miracle and you will have it. Bye-bye.